All right, I think I'm live here. Yep. All right, welcome everyone. Um, we'll call the meeting to order Protective and Emergency Services Committee. Um, is there any declarations of conflict of interest? Okay, seeing none, can I get an approval of the agenda, please? Yes. Thank you. Can I adopt adoption of the minutes from the July 26, 2022 meeting? Yes. Thank you. Any business arising from the minutes? Nothing, Your Worship? No, thank you. He's got it. Uh, nope, we'll do that at number seven. Um, but I'm just surprised that that's the first time you worshipped it. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, uh, reports and discussions. We're heading right into fire. Operational report, Deputy Chief, maybe, whenever you're ready. My apologies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, the electrical vehicle safety uh, course was run on the weekend um, with 30 members attending, and we had uh, one of the electric vehicles, one of the electric bicycles, and a second uh, electric vehicle from uh, a private member, but one of the city's electric uh, cars and bikes uh, for the course, so that was good uh, information. Department activities and fire department updates all rolled into one this time around, Chair. Uh, the ELS competition uh, is in the interview stage with four candidates remaining. Uh, the Career Firefighter 2 competition is open and closes on August 23rd. The Volunteer Firefighter campaign closed on August 12th. We have uh, 17 candidates pick up packages. Uh, the September 9th deadline of returning all paperwork and we already have six candidates have their paperwork submitted. Uh, working groups have been established internally with uh, volunteer officers, firefighters, and career members to put together specifications and trial criteria for a number of major pur purchases, including uh, new fire trucks, new uh, fire records management software system, and new thermal imaging cameras, and new battery operated rescue tools. Work continues on development of the city's strategic plan and departmental operational plan, uh, which will run concurrently or side by side with that. Uh, Charlottetown Fire provided a rehabilitation trailer, ladder truck, and approximately 30 members to the Wood Islands Fire, uh, Ferry Fire. Uh, the Fire Marshal's Office sent out a uh, thank you to all departments and uh, members participating. Um, it was a mutual aid across the island pretty much, or at least on the eastern end, and uh, all departments that, uh, that uh, volunteered to help out and, and do their part uh, contributed to that successful outcome. Both of our antique vehicles, the 1916 Federal and 1929 France, were made ready for a Gold Cup parade, and they both uh, rolled through the streets proudly uh, this past Friday. Uh, the one driver, or sorry, the passenger on the uh, La France this time around, volunteer district chief Mo Sherry, uh, was effectively retired uh, end of July this year after 55 years of dedicated service to the department and the uh, community he lives in. So. Uh, Mo was in the right-hand seat uh, as, as they rolled through the streets this time around. That concludes my report, Chair. Okay. Yes, thank you, Deputy Chief. Um, any questions with regards to the um, operational report? The, um, just a quick question for you. So I see that the, we're in the, I'll say the career firefighter competition closes August 23rd. Correct. Once that closes, what time frame can we be looking at before <clears throat> the three new positions are um, are filled uh, ideally by the middle of September. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? Sure. No questions. All right. Thank you, Deputy Chief. You want to move into the other portion of your report? Uh, as I mentioned, Chair, I just combined uh, 
fire department updates with our operational report there. So okay. that was the end of my report. Perfect. Easy peasy. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll move into police operational. Chief, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Chair. I'll go live here. Um, thank you, Chair. Also service um, in July, uh, we're um, 1,943 for the police services. That uh, was up about 22% from last year uh, in July. Um, we had a, um, the Gold Cup and Saucer Parade over the weekend. I'd like to commend the organizers for a great event and uh, commend our staff for, uh, for maintaining uh, a great level of safety and uh, traffic management during the event. Um, also, um, we, uh, I spoke to um, staff at NPS uh, Security Services, National Police Security Services, about extending the ambassador program. And uh, it's on, uh, on schedule to start uh, the 29th, next Monday. Uh, so extending the, uh, uh, the existing park patrol ambassador program into our city squares. So our community policing section uh, will have an orientation with, with uh, that staff and involve the rec department also. Um, and uh, we look forward to getting that going. Um, also, uh, I met with Crime Stoppers representatives who uh, informed me that the 2022 Police Officer of the Year uh, nominations are, um, are now, uh, uh, they're accepting applicants. and. Uh, for um, to be announced in, in September. So uh, we will be looking internally to our uh, leadership team to identify uh, potential candidates and uh, we, um, we look forward to, to showcasing some of our great staff. Um, also, um, I have a MOU uh, in previous meetings uh, last year. We talked about the Livable Cities program, uh, uh, sensors of um, that go on street lights to monitor traffic and, and uh, there's a camera element to it too. Um, it's a no cost pilot for six months uh, for our city. Um, it, has, uh, it is in alignment with other strategies that we're doing, including our EWAT, but also our, our uh, speed century signs. So, um, you know, we're supportive of this initiative and, and seeing uh, what it, how it can complement and if at all, uh, you know, extend it past the pilot. And I have copies of this MOU uh, for you to review in it. Answer any questions? So, Chief, um, without me kind of reading through this, how many are we talking? I know it's, we're talking about uh, installing them on existing streetlights. So, is there is there a number that that we're going to have um, as part of the pilot? Yeah, uh, Chair. The last time we spoke, uh, my understanding was five sensors. So, a, a modest start off uh, to see the potential, um, but that's uh, that was my understanding. And it's uh, this discussion uh, started quite some time ago, but lots of uh, Lots going on in the last uh, while, so we're happy to get it back on pace, and uh, we'll keep you updated on any any progress. I now see it in B. Sorry. Um, sorry, I'm not very good at this. If it's a su successful pilot, what's the cost afterwards? Um, that uh, is yet to be kind of uh, showcased to us. Uh, um, as um, it really depends on um, the extent of um, of the of the, any potential go forward implementation, like the starting off with a modest amount of sensors, um, but like with any sort of uh, um, you know economies of scale of, of implementation across the city. Um, but uh, um, so I, I couldn't give you an accurate measurement of cost at this point, but. Uh, Certainly, we're very conscious of cost, and before we entered into any sort of uh, thing beyond the trial, we would uh, make sure uh, was brought back to committee for discussion and council. Okay. Mr. Chair, could I ask a question? 
Go ahead, Your Worship, yes. So if I look at page one, it's the smart city camera, speed micro sensor. So they're going on the street, existing street lights. So they have camera capability and speed sensor. And that you've identified on, uh, on page four, five locations, Mount Everett Road, Kensington Road, Norwood Road, Oak Drive, Northridge Parkway. I'm just asking, is the camera similar to your e-camera or is it more, more uh, precise, high-def camera? Um, you worship, no, it's a different type of technology and um, not every camera has both technology built into it. So it's either a camera or a speed sensor. There's also other types of sensors in the Liverpool Cities program, like noise sensors, um, you know, uh, air quality sensors that could be expanded upon eventually. Um, the cameras uh, do not have the the uh, uh, the resolution or the pan tilt zoom capabilities. Are meant for more static um, monitoring of potentially an intersection or a roadway, and uh, so they don't have. Um, the immediate uh, situational awareness either of, of the e-watch cameras where they can be tapped into uh, in live time. And just a follow-up question, Mr. Chair. So the five sites, did you use a Rubik uh, evaluation for those five or did you just randomly pick five? Did you notice that they were the most concerned by the councillors or residents for that area, for those areas? So these, um, we had our community policing NCO, Sergeant Dave Flynn, work with the uh, local city's people and uh, based on recommendations from our community action team and community policing team who are in, in constant contact with our counselors, these were the recommendations that came out of it. Sure. All right, any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, the mayor just uh, asked the same question I just was going to ask. Like how how did you get down to the five places? Because I was never ever sort of contacting Ward Five or anything along that line, or or is it because these are the places we're hitting with speeding all the time? Like these five areas are the most popular ones, I guess. I think it it that is part of the equation, uh, uh, Councillor, but also areas where we don't have any other technology. Um, in place, or uh, so um, so it, it's either a volume, you know, a volume, or or uh, you know uh, the community cry that that got it there, or the or the absence of technology that would help us monitor those areas. So, um, all right. Any other questions? I'm guessing we just need to be able to have committee make a recommendation to council. For this, so does someone want to move this? I'll move okay. it. Yep. Moved and seconded. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Good. Opposed? Mr. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, Carried. is this is that the completion of your operational report? Could I just ask a question yeah. about your operational report? Yes. So you said that we're extending the program, uh, extending the ambassador program in the 500 lot squares, starting the 29th of August. Are we going for 10 weeks, 12 weeks? And the role of these ambassadors is just to report to police if they need backup or, I, I'm, I know we have a role for the ambassadors at Victoria Park, but I'm just trying to figure out what the role will be for the ambassadors at, at I'm sure, two particular squares in the downtown. Well, uh, Your Worship, um, the it's really an extension of our park patrol, which is, you know, uh, a level of uh, presence uh, and uh, reporting to police uh, that would be akin to neighborhood policing uh, or or uh, neighborhood watch. Um, so this is a paid service to help us um, deal with the and prevent issues in those areas. It had success in in the parks, and uh, and we will uh, uh, have a special orientation with uh, staff for for uh, National Port Security to um, make sure they fully appreciate the dynamics in the, in the city square and help them. But uh, this is not meant to, um, to be a policing action and more as a, a preventative re enhanced reporting action. 
Yeah, and Mr. Chair, it's uh, <clears throat> both squares on the east side of the downtown and the 500 lots are in dire need of this service. And I'm, and, and I'm appreciative that the provincial government has stepped in to assist financially with it. So it's good news, I know, for the council from Ward 1 and for the city as a whole. And I know some of the neighbors down there because that's where I grew up. Just on a second point, Mr. Chair, it was brought up at a regular monthly meeting uh, by Councillor uh, Yankov regarding the Pride Parade and the follow-up from that. Have we addressed that with the Pride organizers, the Pride Parade organizers? I know that I spoke to Deputy Chief Jennifer McCarran about it. So was there any follow-up? Uh, could I get a response? So I spoke to our community policing section who work with the organizers of the Pride Parade to schedule a follow-up meeting um, regarding that. All right, any other questions with regards to the operational report? Okay, let's move into personnel, Chief. Sorry. Um, also, um, we received a uh, notification uh, from uh, uh, Constable um, Matt Lee that he's also uh, um, leaving the CPS for uh, another uh, uh, career opportunity. And uh, Matt's been a great addition, and uh, we will, um, we will um, you know, miss him also. And, um, you know, I mention these chairs because it's, it, it's important uh, um, that uh, we work with our HR staff to fill these gaps as soon as possible, and uh, and um, you know certainly uh, as we as move into the uh, September month, which is traditionally a, with the students back, uh, a very busy month for for policing in, in the city. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Deputy McCarran um, to give us an update on the outstanding dispatch positions. Uh, to, so we did have uh, two rounds of interviews for the dispatch. Um, Haley Collister was successful in the first round. Um, our second round, we did have a suitable candidate, but she turned down the position. So we're going to go back to the drawing board again to see if we can get a full-time dispatcher and also two part-times. And with Matt Lee leaving, it would probably be a good time to get a dead entry clerk as well hired. Those are, uh, those are big shoes to fill, Chief. Congratulations to Chris and Ross. And um, yeah, it's always nice to be able to retire and move on to something something new. Leaves us shorthanded, but <laughs> that's just being selfish. Any questions for Chief on, on uh, personnel? Nothing? Okay, thanks, Chief. Uh, moving on to bylaws. So, Chair, um, I do have uh, some other handouts here to give in the area of uh, amendments to um, to our um, to our uh, traffic bylaw and to our Victoria Park bylaw, and these uh, recommendations are in response to recent legislation and change of the Highway Traffic Act to accommodate accommodate power assisted bicycles and other motorized bicycles. And so we've reflected on our bylaws and uh, see um, a couple areas where we would have to, um, where we would have to make amendments to become an alignment. And uh, not major changes at, at all, but uh, would have to be put forth through resolution to, to make those amendments. Chief, do you wanna just, just, we're just getting this report here. Can you highlight maybe just quickly for us the the changes here that way I mean we can read them here but I'm just wondering if 
anyone watching the audience can hear what the proposed changes are? Uh, yes, Chair. One of the biggest things is actually uh, giving a definition of a power assisted bicycle and putting those um, into our, our, those two separate bylaws and, and, uh, and making those changes. Um, so in the traffic bylaw, for example, we would add the definition of power assisted uh, bicycle, same as the, the Highway Traffic Act. We'd also amend sections 9.8 to include power assisted bicycles. So that section would now read, no person shall operate a motorcycle, miniature motorcycle, moped, or power assisted bicycle on public property, excluding streets and roadways within the boundaries of the city of Charlottetown, unless specifically authorized by resolution of city council or in cases of emergency by the police services. We would also need to add the definition of power assisted bicycles into the Victoria Park and Promenade bylaw. Perfect, thanks Chief. Any questions? So, Mr. Chair, yes. I, I know we discussed this before and we and we are trying to align it with the HTA, Highway, Highway Traffic Act, which per, prohibits powered bicycles to go on the uh, active transportation pathways. I think we already made that amendment, Chief. That, that's correct, Your Worship. Yeah. And um, I know being a member of the Civic Disabilities Advisory Committee, We'll be enforcing helmet bylaws with the power assisted bicycles, or is it a more of a police officer's discretion on what he or she enforces on that issue? Like traditional um, bicycles, uh, Your Worship, you know, we, we will we see you in the helmet as a certainly. Uh, um, you know, uh, regulated and necessary piece of equipment to, to ride bicycles, and uh, we will police that as 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 much as our resources allow. All right. Any other questions, comments? Nothing. Perfect. All right, Chief. Thanks for that. Let's move into uh, community uh, community policing. Yep. Thank you. My mistake. Uh, also on the 27th, we will um, be assisting with the Grand Fondo cycling event, which has gotten uh, quite large over the years. So there'll be 300 uh, participants in that. Constable Coffin uh, attended the Parkdale Community Center for a social on August 4th, and he brought uh, the antique car 52 to that event. Constable Coffin also uh, received a donation for 100 free ice cream coupons from McDonald's, and that they're to assist in uh, trying to uh, encourage youth to wear their bicycle helmets. And uh, Constable Coffin also uh, had Car 52 for a barbecue, um, which um, was for brain injury awareness. Charlottetown Police um, are participating in Sirens for Life campaign, which is a, um, a healthy competition between multiple agencies for the donation of blood services. Uh, the Community Wellness Unit continues, uh, continues interactions and foot patrols in and around the area of the Outreach Center. Uh, the Community Wellness Unit is engaged with the Housing Authority and Outreach staff and are progressively working towards possible solutions for uh, homelessness issues in the city. And as the Chief mentioned earlier, uh, we had a full complement of officers out to assist in the logistics and traffic of the Gold Cup and Saucer Parade. 
That is my report. Perfect. Thanks, Deputy Chief. Any questions for you do? All right, Your Worship, you're Just up. Just following up on my favorite uh, issue, the perk and ticket forgiveness program. Are we getting any closer to resolution working with the other standing committees, economic development, public works? I think that's it. Do we know any update? So, Worship, we had our parking ticket coordinator review that, and uh, and we, it would certainly be a challenge for us to implement that and 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 to um, have a check and balance in place to make it meaningful. Like in in spirit, we're supportive of the program, but realistically, um, you know, we're not in a position to extend any of the resources um, to to. Uh, um, you know, engage. It would take a, a, a big commitment in resources to to do this and uh, and uh, find a way that it can't be manipulated and uh, and turned into a negative where it was you know meant to be something that's a positive. So, so Mr. Chair, could we look at working with the parking committee that was set up by DCI, the City of Charlottetown, and maybe find a path forward that is less in, in trying to place less of the responsibility or work on one department and uh, work with the other departments that, that I mentioned, economic development, public works, and I know there must be some best practices that are, that Halifax uh, have in place to implement this program, but it's something I, I just want to make sure that we don't put it on the shelf and forget about it. Um, so it's just something I want the police department to consider and I will bring it up at the other standing committees. And the other issue, Chief, is we have the downtown uh, residential parking program uh, for downtown residents that have parking permits to allow them to park in front of their homes. Do we, do we have a database on that? Uh, maybe it could be Sean Coombs or yourself. Do we have a database that updates that every year on who paid and who's outstanding and who's using those parking spaces? Yes, Your Worship. So all of those are, are databased in, in our uh, in our system, and so you, they will expire automatically if they're not renewed each year by the by the residents. So the onus is on them to renew it, um, and uh, and we would have clear accounting on 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 who. So the way it works is is our our move to e-ticketing uh, um, allows us to. Um, so if a commissioner comes up to a vehicle when he runs a plate they will they will see on their on their tablet if this is a residential uh, permit holder and uh, so um, yeah so all of those are, are kept and uh, and renewed on a yearly basis okay so th there is a there is a follow-up on it and the permit is for the address of the person who applied for the permit correct is that he or she has that permit in front of her house, or is it for anywhere in the in the in the block area that they live in? No, not exactly. The, the permit is actually for the vehicle. So when when the commissioner doesn't have the benefit to know um, associated to anything but a license plate when when they run the vehicle, so that vehicle has to be registered as an authorized uh, plate and vehicle to be parked um, in that area. And that zone uh, for the residential parking is zoned off, so not necessarily in front of your residence because you could run into circumstances where there's, um, you know, uh, in front of a multi-unit building where there's only a couple of spaces. No one has ownership of those, but uh, um, have ability to park within a zone that have a number of spaces. So our practice is that we don't give out any more uh, permits than we have spaces in that area of residence. All right. Thanks, Your Worship. Any other questions? Yeah, I just like to touch base. Uh, Your Worship, you keep bringing up about the, the parking downtown, the free parking. Was that just for the summer, or was that just year round, or what is the purpose of this? So in Halifax, it runs from June first until September thirtieth, and it's it's called a parking ticket forgiveness program. So if you purchase something in downtown Halifax and you get a ticket from the park in, or I call them the meter hornets over there in Halifax, then you take that ticket into the police station 
or City Hall, and they verify that you made the purchase and your, your, your parking ticket is forgiven. And it's only for a certain period. So it's not free parking. It's something has to be purchased. Okay, thanks. Mr. Chair, on the topic of parking. Yes, Councilor um, Duffy. I don't expect Chief to have the answer right. Uh, and you probably do, but I don't expect one. Um, the other day, uh, and I'll make this very quick. Uh, the other day, there, I was parking next to a spot uh, by the Confederation Center on Queen Street down here. And the parking spot next to me had three motorbikes parked in the spot. And the commissioner came along to write tickets. Now, I didn't stick around long enough to see how many tickets he wrote, but does he just nab one uh, motorcycle or does he ticket all three? All three are in the one spot with no funds in the meter. Um, Councillor Duffy, you, you pose an interesting question. You know, uh, if he's going to ticket any of them, he, he would have to ticket all three single vehicle um, occupancy. So, without him having the knowledge of which vehicle uh, was supposed to be there, he, you know, he, he would uh, he would have to ticket all three. Whether that was the case, the circumstance, uh, I'm not aware not aware of this time. But uh, yeah. that would be the best practice. Sounds fair to me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is that it for community policing? All right, on to new business. Councillor Duffy, did you have something you want to bring up under new business? Uh, yes, last night Councillor Tweel mentioned the fact of Towers Road. Uh, we usually get an update about this time of year on the, the activity on Towers Road from the, the police department. So I was asked the chief or one of the deputies, would so we have an update on, from your analyst on, on the activity on Towers Road, if any. We've had one on Towers Road. Uh, Mr. Your Councilor Tweel was saying it was a very dangerous road, but we've only had one incident. That was in a crosswalk down close to um, the the end of Towers Road, in a crosswalk close to the Charlton or the, whatever the mall is called now, crossing whatever. Um, all other accidents, and I think there's eight others, were up on Mount Everett Road, the the, the uh, intersection of. Towers Road and Mount Edward, but they occur at rear end uh, 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 collisions or bumps or whatever. All the police reports have to do with accidents on Mount Edward Road, not on Towers Road. There's only one, and that's in the in the uh, the uh, crosswalk. Could we have that, uh, Chief? Uh, absolutely, I can have the analysts uh, prepare that uh, yeah. same analysis as for a comparison as we did before. Yeah, and, just to and add bring, on. And bring it to uh, next yeah. committee meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Duffy. Um, I know it's, I, sh I should have said this because I, when we talked about uh, business rising from the minutes, um, but I'm going gonna, gonna to just ask now. So last meeting, Chief, um, you know, we had talked, um, well, I, I brought up that Councillor McCabe had talked about the um, the officers in the school system, and I know that we met with with the uh, Minister of Education and the Deputy Minister <coughs> of uh, Education, and I'm uh, just wondering if you're able to provide an update on have we been in contact with Minister Compton with regards to potential funding opportunities to continue this program on, or have we done anything on this one yet? So, Chair, it was my understanding after leaving that meeting that uh, um, that the um, that the representatives from the just from the education department were going to talk to Justice, and uh, and there would be an outreach back to us from there. So, I had not, have not heard anything from from either department since since our meeting, and uh, certainly didn't want to undermine that process in any sort of outreach. Uh, I have no problem reaching out to, to Justice and uh, inquiring on, on those lines, uh, but I have not heard anything uh, as of date. As of date, and uh, and uh, however, um, you know, if that's uh, if I if we haven't heard anything by the end of the week, then next week I will make some inquiries. Okay, thanks, Chief. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to follow up if they're not. I mean, everyone's busy right now and totally appreciate that, but this is one we can't leave too, too long. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you don't mind following up with them or having someone follow up, that would be great if, if you don't hear anything by next week. So, so Mr. Chair, was that under business arising from the minutes? Yes. 
Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. That's why I said that I, I missed it on the way by. All right, the sarcastic mayor. <laughs> All right, we're going to move, uh, can we get a motion to move into a closed session as per section 119.1b, undisclosed uh, confidential information, D, human re resource matter, and E. Are we, is there two resolutions that we want to put through before in closed session? Okay, so we have two resolutions. Where are they? Oh, they're there. They're in between. <clears throat> no, that's great. Thanks. So, the f do you want to go through the resolutions, Chief, or do you want me to? <clears throat> so, the first one uh, is uh, for Public Works to be authorized to cut grass, remove any garbage and, and other materials or debris, clean up and properly dispose the same at the owner's expense that the following property is located at 2325 Holmes Lane and 345 Houston Street. <clears throat> okay, moved by your worship. Okay, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, Ramsey. Mr. Jim, can yep. we just speak to the resolution? Uh, Chief or the deputies, I know there's some other properties on Houston Street uh, and I've been receiving calls. <clears throat> in particular down in the corner of Waltham Drive and Newson Street. Um, that's a school uh, zone. Uh, I taught at Prince Street School for 20 years, and uh, I, I have spoken to our bylaw enforcement officer, Todd Sutcliffe. He's been in contact with the owner. But Chief or Mr. Chair, if you drive by, uh, it's 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 in a bad it's in it's, it's it's in a bad situation or it's it's in very dilapidated dilapidated state, and I, I just wanted to bring that up in the public meeting because I've been receiving calls and I'm sure the council from the area, but it, it it it's the home at the corner on the northeast corner of Walton Drive in Newson Street. And, Your Worship, uh, that was on my list that I gave to uh, Deputy Mamie. Yeah, that and if we just, uh, Dep uh, Acting uh, Chief Mamie, it's just we have to take a look at the school's going to be open in the next three weeks. And um, I know parents are trying to use the, uh, just walking their children to school, but that's, it's, just driving by is, is, is hard to, is hard to, uh, to, to absorb. So it, could we just follow up on that? I, I know it's not part of the resolution, but hopefully it, it becomes part of the resolution or a future resolution. Thank you, Chief. Definitely, Your Worship. Uh, it was actually on the list of properties Council Duffy uh, gave us last uh, month, and I do have updates on those, just to share in closed session. Councillor Ramsey? Yeah, uh, did we not discuss, Chief, a while ago that uh, in order for these to be done, they go to council, right? The next council meeting, yeah. and it's passed. But so that's another month passed since we're looking at certain properties. Is there no way we can speed this up? I, I thought we discussed this last year or something along that line. Like, why do we have to wait for uh, the next regular council meeting? Uh, like, let's say something was in the first of August. Well, then we're certainly not going to look at it until the first of September, right? So that's all. That's another month of the property being the way it is. I I, I just thought last year we we sort of discussed is is there a way we could speed it up? Well, you're maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You're absolutely right, Councillor Ramsey. But uh, it, to get it going is is a little cumbersome. But once it's going, I think it's 18 months or two years. We can go back and visit. So a lot of these have been offenders before within the the recent past. So you can get those folks squared away a lot faster, but you're right. But I asked the same question a couple of years ago, and the answer from legal, of course, was uh, we can't go on private property unless we have council's permission, and that's it. End of story. Well, no, I understand, but I understand that, but I'm just saying, like, if the bylaw officer sends something in, like, why do we have to wait? Why do we have to wait another month, you know, before council approves it? So then, you know, the you don't have to wait another month. It's just the fact that uh, the the opportunity for a full council to vote on it might be another month. Okay. 
Because uh, one uh, one more thing, because there's some of these properties we've been doing year after year oh, after yep. year, so we must own these things by now. I I, I think you, you know for, for for all the liens that are on them. Yeah. And there's one on Queen Street there, and it's just unbelievable. Okay, thank you. It is it is a it is a case of timing. Um, could we speed up the timing? There is the potential to. I mean, uh, the bylaw officer has to issue a warning. I think they have a week <clears throat> to uh, to adhere to the warning. If they don't, then of course it gets passed on to here. But maybe you know, moving forward to speed it up because we have two council meetings per month. Um, it's just have an email uh, vote yeah. or a poll, and we'll be able to catch we'll be able to catch them every second week as yeah, opposed to once that. a month. Yeah. So that might be the the, the yeah. quicker way. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we have a motion to approve um, the resolution for the grass cutting on two properties. Um, all in favor? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, the next resolution um, is just a sole purchase of a forensic light uh, in the amount of th the 30430 plus HST. Uh, the funding for the equipment to be uh, was allocated in the 2022-23 capital budget. And uh, if there's any questions, the chief is here to answer them. If not... I can have a motion to pass on to council. Move it. Moved and seconded. Yep. All right. All in favor? All right. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Both of those are passed. So now we will go through this long motion to move into a closed session as per section 119, 1B, undisclosed confidential information, D, human resources matter, and E, a matter still under consideration of the MGA of PEI. Moved and seconded. Thank you. We'll move into.